In the last lecture, we talked about k-means clustering algorithm. Given a data set and number of clusters k, k-means algorithm gives you k groups in your data set. Each group, that is each cluster, is represented by a center. So in k-means clustering, your model is a set of centers. And the shape of your model is k by d, where d is your number of features, right? Each center is d-dimensional, and you have k such centers. Once we have these centers, given a new point, now we can assign it to a cluster by computing its distance to all cluster centers, and then picking the cluster with the smallest distance. So that's the main idea of k-means algorithm. It's a very popular and most commonly used clustering algorithm because it's easy to understand, it's easy to implement, it runs relatively quickly, and it scales well to large data sets. Scikit-learn also has this scalable variant of k-means called mini-batch k-means, and it can handle very large data sets. So overall, k-means is a widely used clustering algorithm. That said, k-means has its own limitations. First, it relies on random initialization, and therefore the outcome may change depending upon this initialization. In the last lecture, I mentioned this method k-means++ for initialization, but it doesn't solve this problem completely. Second limitation is that in k-means, you need to specify the number of clusters in advance. And this can be a problem. Very often on real-world datasets, you don't really know how many clusters to expect in the dataset. In the last lecture, we looked at these two methods, the elbow method and the silhouette method, to find the optimal number of clusters or the methods that help us come up with this optimal number of clusters. But on real-world data sets, these plots are not very interpretable. So they give us some guidance, but they don't help us a lot. Finally, in k-means clustering, each point has to have a cluster assignment. And if we have outliers in our data, then they can influence the cluster centers in a big way. So we cannot really have noise points or outliers in k-means clustering. Another limitation of k-means is that it can only capture relatively simple shapes. Each cluster in k-means is defined by its cluster center and you can imagine these cluster boundaries similar to how we had these decision boundaries in uh, classification problems. We won't go into detail how we come up with these boundaries, but it's good to know that these boundaries between clusters are linear. And therefore, it fails to identify clusters with complex shapes. Let's look at a few failure cases for k-means. In this example, we have these two half moons. And we would hope that our clustering algorithm can discover these two half moon shapes, but it's not possible with k-means. When we run k-means with k equal to two on this data set, this is what we get. So this is the first cluster identified by k-means with this center, and this is our second cluster with this center. And you can see that the boundary here is linear. Another example. In this case, we have these elongated non-spherical clusters. We see that there are three clusters, so if we run k-means with k equal to 3, then this is what we get. So it identifies this as one cluster, 
this middle part as second cluster and this green part as the third cluster. Again, so for K means all directions are equally important for each cluster and that's why it fails to identify these non-spherical clusters. Third example, as I said before, k-means is unable to capture complex cluster shapes. So in this case, we have two clusters, this inner circle and this outer circle. So this is our one cluster and this is our second cluster. But k-means won't be able to capture it. If we run k-means with k equal to 2, this is what we get. So this is one cluster according to k-means and this is another cluster according to k-means. So the question is, can we do better than this? Do we have a clustering algorithm that can capture these complex shapes and that can overcome some of the limitations that we just saw? And the answer is this DB scan. It has its own problems, but it will solve some of k-means problems. So in the next video, we will talk about dbscan.